Hello, and welcome. Today I'm going to discuss on how to convert a to-do list into a calendar format in Excel. This exercise will involve using a few simple functions. To begin, let's enter a random date in cell C6. Now, we'll change the cell format to a short date. Next, we'll populate the weekday names in cells B5 through H5 from Sunday to Saturday. To make sure we have enough space for our task contents, let's adjust the column widths as needed. Now, we'll use Excel's sequence function to generate the date values. This will create a series of dates starting from the one we entered earlier in cell C6 and extending for the next seven days, covering the full week. Let's change the date format again. As you can see, the start date of July 1st doesn't align with the Sunday of the week. So, we need to find the exact day of the week for July 1st in order to calculate the date for the first day of the week. This is where the handy weekday function in Excel comes into play. We can use it to determine the weekday number for July 1st, and then subtract that from the sequence of dates we generated earlier. Then, we'll just add one to get the date for the Sunday that starts the week. Now that we have adjusted the starting date to properly align with the Sunday of the week, let's continue generating the remaining date values for the rest of the week. We'll use the same sequence function to generate the following date values of the same month. To increase space for our daily tasks, let's increase the height of the cells in this range. This will give us enough space to jot down our to-do items for each day. Great, now let's format this calendar view to make it look visually appealing. However, you may notice that the date values are also showing from the previous and next months, which can look a bit cluttered. To clean this up, we can use conditional formatting. The formula-based condition we'll use is to check if the month number of the date value is not equal to the current month. If that's the case, we'll format those dates with a lighter font color, making them less focused. Excellent, the calendar view is now dynamically updating the date values as we move through the weeks. However, I think we can take the formatting a step further to make this look even more professional. First, let's change the date format to just display the month and year. This will help us focus more on the current month's information, which will be useful when we want to filter or analyze the data later on. To add an even more interactive element, let's use the spin button control from the developer tab to allow us to easily adjust the month. If you don't have access to the developer tab, you can activate it from the customize ribbon menu. We'll link the spin button to cell A10, which will hold the month value. Then, we'll use the eDate function to dynamically calculate the end date of the month based on the value in cell A10 and the start date in cell A3. All right, let's go ahead and set the start date for our calendar view to January 1st in cell A3. Let's take the formatting of this calendar view one step further by applying some colors to make it really pop.
Excellent, the calendar is looking great. Now, let's move on to using the powerful Excel filter function to help us filter our to-do list tasks based on the date values in the calendar. We'll select the task column as the array, and then use the date column to match the date values shown in the calendar. However, I noticed there was an error value showing up in the formula. No problem, we can easily avoid that by adding some additional logic to the formula. Great, the formula is working properly now. To apply it across the entire to-do list, we can simply select the row and use the fill right option to copy the formula to the rest of the cells. However, I noticed that we're getting a spill error value in some cells because the same date has multiple tasks associated with it. No problem, we can use the text join function to display all the tasks for each date in a single cell. All right, let's copy the modified formula again and apply it. To make the content more readable, let's use the wrap text option to ensure the full task details are visible. Excellent, we're almost done here. Let's go ahead and iterate through a few tasks and check how the calendar view updates. Wonderful, it's updating seamlessly as we make changes to the to-do list. To really make this calendar view stand out, Let's use conditional formatting to highlight the cells that contain tasks. This will draw the user's attention directly to the dates that have actionable items. And the best part is, if you need to plan for the next year, you can simply update the start date in cell A3 and then use the spin button to navigate through the months. The calendar and task filtering will automatically adjust to the new date range. I think we've really taken this Excel to-do list to the next level with all the formatting, functionality, and usability improvements we've made. Great work! If you found this tutorial helpful, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. That way, you'll be the first to know when I post new Excel tips, tricks, and tutorials to help you level up your productivity. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.